Hello, and welcome back to part two of this hip film tutorial. I'm Axel Wilkinson, and in part one, we learned how to create a new project in HitFilm, import our footage, and edit it together. In the second half, we are going to pick up from there and work through the rest of our project in HitFilm. So, now that we've completed our edit, the next step is to add some effects. For this, we will use a different timeline. The editor timeline in HitFilm works great for piecing our video clips together, but if we want to start creating cool effects, we will want to use a different type of timeline called a composite shot. As the term composite would suggest, this type of timeline allows us to combine multiple different elements into a single final result. In this case, we will use a composite shot to combine our video clip with a 3D muzzle flash created in HitFilm. Composite shots look and function differently from the editor timeline. In the editor, we have tracks listed here, which can contain multiple clips. The track Video 1, for example, contains all three of our video clips in sequence, with their corresponding audio clips in Audio 1. Let's right-click on the Firing Close clip and choose Make Composite Shot from the menu. Change the name to Muzzle Flash and click Convert, and a new timeline will be created. Now, in this timeline, which is a composite shot, instead of tracks, we have a list of layers. And each object we add will reside on its own layer. The layers stack up here like sheets of paper, so whichever layer is highest on the timeline will appear to be in front of the other layers on the viewer. So, let's add a new layer with a muzzle flash effect. In the Effects panel, open the 3D folder and you'll see Gunfire listed toward the bottom. This will create a default muzzle flash that we can edit to look however we want it to. But rather than starting with the default, let's close that and open the Presets folder to use one of the many pre-built effects that come included with HitFilm. Open the 3D Effects folder and then Muzzle Flashes and we will select the Assault Rifle Daylight preset and drag that onto the timeline. Move the mouse so that the green line is above our video layer and release the button. Because HitFilm's muzzle flashes are 3D, we need to create a camera in order to see them, so click Yes. Let's move the gunfire preset we just added until it's below our video layer by clicking on its name and dragging downward. When the green line is below our video, release, and now the flash disappears from the viewer because it is obscured by the video layer that's in front of it. You can drag layers like this to change their order at any time. Go ahead and move the muzzle flash back to the top so we can see it. Now, if we switch back to the editor, notice that the name of this clip has changed because it has been replaced with the composite shot that we just created. Originally, the firingclose.mp4 clip lived here, but now that we've converted that to a composite shot, Whatever we do in the timeline of this composite shot is updated onto the editor timeline as well. Let's switch back to our muzzle flash composite by clicking its tab. And now we need to position the effect so that it lines up with the rifle. There is a flash of light in the footage which was created on set to simulate the light created by the muzzle flash. There it is. So we need to find the frame where this flash occurs and that is where the gunshot should happen. So now, select the gunfire layer, if it's not already selected, and a colored device called a widget will be visible in the middle of the viewer. This is used to position whichever layer is selected on the timeline. So position the mouse over the red arrow until it highlights, and we can drag the effect to the right until it lines up with the end of the rifle. Use the green arrow to adjust the height until the height is right for the end of the barrel as well. These arrows can be used in this way to move a 3D layer in any direction. Next, we will use the small blue square to rotate the effect so it lines up with the angle of the rifle. Drag the blue square up until the tip of the muzzle flash is in line with the angle of the rifle's barrel. We can also adjust the position of a layer from the controls panel. So let's click on the controls tab to open it. Then open the transform properties by clicking the small triangle next to the transform heading. If you can't read all of the numbers in this panel, you can drag the divider on the right hand side to make the panel bigger. You can adjust the size of any panel in this way. To rotate the effect so it's pointing more toward the camera, 
Click and drag on the second value of the orientation control, dragging to the right until the effect seems to line up with the angle of the gun. The three values in the orientation properties correspond to the three colored squares that are visible on the viewer widget. Similarly, the three arrows in the widget correspond to the three values in the position control. When you need to adjust the positioning of any layer, you can either use the values in the control panel or the widget on the viewer to do so. So using whichever you prefer, go ahead and adjust the position of the muzzle flash until you're pleased with it. Now our flash is aligned, but if we play back through the clip, it's visible the whole time. So the next step is to animate the flash so that it only appears when it should. So let's find that frame with the flash of light again. And this is where the muzzle flash effect should occur. So back in the controls panel, let's close transform and open the core flare and side flares headings. The core flare is this main flash which is coming out the barrel and these smaller flashes coming out sideways are the side flares. At the top of each of these sections is an active control which controls whether or not the effect is visible. The circle to the left of each heading is the keyframe button. If we turn this button on for any property, you can then create keyframes to adjust that property over time. Go ahead and enable keyframing for both of the active controls. Now we will step backward one frame using the comma key. The comma and period keys on your keyboard, which also have pointed brackets, can be used to move forward or backward through the timeline one frame at a time. So press the comma key one time to step back a frame. And now we'll create a new keyframe for the active state by ticking the checkbox on each of these active properties to turn the effect off. If we advance a frame again using the period key, we can see that our effect is still turned on on this frame because of the keyframe we created. So hit period one more time to go forward one more frame. And here we will turn the effect off once again by clicking the checkboxes. Now if we play through the scene again, we have a spiffy muzzle flash when the rifle fires. However, we can hear the director in this clip, so let's collapse our gunfire layer, select our media layer, and open the layer properties. Here we'll have a mute option, and we can tick that box to turn the audio off for this layer to remove the director's voice. Switch back to the editor now, and you can see as we play through here that now the flash is properly placed and animated to match our gunfire. But this final clip is noticeably darker than the previous two, so let's add some color correction to it to make it match better. Click the muzzle flash tab again to open our composite shot, and in the effects panel, let's close the presets folder and open the color folder. Select auto levels, and we can just drag that to the firing close layer and drop it. Immediately you can see the layer gets much brighter as that effect is applied. Under the effects heading for the controls on this layer, we can see the effect listed there, and we can toggle this checkbox to compare before and after of what that effect is doing to the layer. Since we are in a composite shot, we could keyframe the properties of this effect if we needed to, and change the effect it has over time, but in this case that isn't necessary. However, we will want to make one adjustment here and that is to enable the select frame option. Whenever you use any of the auto controls, such as auto color, auto contrast, or auto levels, by default they are going to automatically adjust each frame of the video individually. But since we have a frame in this clip that is significantly brighter than the others, in this frame where the flash of light occurs on set, notice how much darker the background is than in the frame immediately preceding it. And that's the result of the auto levels adjusting each frame separately. But by enabling the select frame control, we can then choose a specific frame using this slider if we want to. Uh, in this case, leaving it at zero will be fine. And now if we advance again to that frame with the flash, you can see that everything gets brighter as a result of the flash, not just the actor's face. And as a result, the background matches better to the other frames as well. Let's switch back to the editor now and see how it looks. We'll just play through that transition. Yeah, now those colors match better, 
But now I'm noticing that the blacks in the first clips are feeling a little bit weak, especially in this one. So let's add auto levels to each of these two clips in the editor as well. In the same way, we can just drag that on to the clip. And then we'll go ahead and do the same thing and enable select frame. And then add auto levels to our first clip. We can add some effects directly to clips on the editor timeline. But anytime we need to use keyframing or create cool visual effects, we should switch to a composite shot. Now, let's go ahead and save our project again by using the keyboard shortcut, Control S. Now we can go back to the beginning and play back through our project to see how it all looks. Now we need to add the sound of the gun firing. This can be done in either the editor or the composite shot. In the editor, right click where it says Audio 1 and choose Insert Track from the menu. This gives us a second audio track where we can add our sound effect. Now let's find the frame where our muzzle flash occurs. There it is. Open the media panel and we can drag our gunshot sound down to the timeline, line it up with the playhead and drop it in place. You can add the audio into the composite shot itself if you prefer. So let's select that clip and delete it. Then go back into our muzzle flash timeline by clicking the tab and if we find the frame where the flash occurs, there it is. In the same way, we can select our gunshot sound effect and just drag it onto the timeline and drop it in place there. In some cases, this could be a better option, since now when we go back to the editor, if we needed to adjust the position of this clip or change our edit at any time, the sound of the gunshot will still be aligned since it's embedded into this composite shot. And as we play through that, the sound is nicely aligned with our muzzle flash. All right, well, that completes the editing and effects portion of our project. So we can save this once again by choosing Save here or pressing Control S. And the final step is to export our project, which combines these clips which we edited together and the effects we created in HipFilm into a single new video file. This is handled in the export screen. Click on Export at the top of the interface to move to the Export screen. At the top of this screen, we can choose which part of the project we wish to export. In our case, we want to choose the editor rather than just our composite shot. Setting the export area to content area ensures that only portions of the timeline that contain content are included in the rendered file. The format that you choose will affect what options appear in this lower portion of the screen. All of these options are explained over here on the right hand side. You can also export directly to your YouTube channel by clicking the YouTube tab at the left hand side of the screen. If you're using the HitFilm demo, only YouTube export is available. I'm going to choose Computer and export using the MP4 format and the default settings. Click Export and we can choose a location for our video file and give it a name. Click Save and the export screen will appear and export will begin. As this progresses, some useful information will be displayed on this screen, including the time remaining and the time elapsed in the export. The progress bar will show you how close you are to being completed. And once the export is completed, you can close the window by clicking OK or click the play button to immediately view your exported results. Well, congratulations! You have successfully completed your first HipFilm project. Keep practicing with the software, and I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you will find additional tutorials, such as the ones linked here, to help you learn more HipFilm techniques. And remember that you can always ask questions, discuss techniques, or share your creations on the HipFilm.com forums, where there is a whole community of fellow HipFilm users ready to assist you.